EFCC denies investigating Banu state government after Governor Orton dumped APC. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has denied investigating the accounts, appropriation and administration of funds of the government of Banu state. It faulted insinuations that it was working to cripple the government. The Commission said it was only investigating some officials of the state government against who some citizens made allegations of diversion of public funds, money laundering and related offences. The EFCC said its activities in Banu were within its constitutional powers. It faulted claim by the Banu State Attorney General that the investigation being carried out by the EFCC in the state amounted to usurping the functions of the House of Assembly. The anti-graft agency made the explanation in its response to a suit filed by the Banu state government through the state's attorney general. Defendants in the suit are EFCC, Speaker, Banu State House of Assembly, Clerk, Banu State House of Assembly and the Auditor General, Banu State. The EFCC, in its counter-affidavit to the plaintiff's originating summons, stated that its investigation in Banu was informed by petitions from indigenes of the state, including former Commissioner of Police, Abu Bakr Tsav and Joe Magnus, president of a group, Concerned Citizens of Banu State Transparency Anti-Corruption Group, Igboko, Banu State. It stated that the petitioners identified some officials of the state government, who they accused of diverting the state's funds and engaging in money laundering and other related financial crimes, a development, which informed why the state has been unable to pay staff salaries. The EFCC added, in carrying out its onerous duties, the first defendant, being a responsible agency of government, has employed the best practices of extending invitation to concerned state government functionaries through high-ranking government. Officials such as Secretary to the State Government, Permanent Secretaries of Relevant Ministries, Agencies, Accountant General of the State and Liaison Officer, Banu State Liaison Office, Abuja without resorting to crude and uncivilized methods. The first defendant is not investigating the accounts and or appropriation, disbursement and administration of funds of Banu state government. The first defendant is only investigating economic and financial crimes, money laundering related offenses allegedly committed by some officials of Banu state government. The ongoing investigation cannot result into a shutdown or grinding to a halt. The activities of governance in Banu State as the first defendant is not an army of occupation. Indeed, the first defendant has not shut down government offices' business as it has been inviting relevant state government officials to make statements and or furnish relevant documents as the need arises. The ongoing investigation can only result in restoring the confidence of citizens of Banu State, who are calling for accountability, transparency and probity in the affairs of government of their state. It may well be that the outcome of investigation may prove the allegations as baseless, which is in the interest of the government of Banu State. That contrary to the depositions contained in paragraphs 12-13 of the affidavit in support of the originating summons, the business of governance of Banu State has not in any way suffered or been destabilized consequent upon the ongoing investigation, as relevant officials only report as the need arises, who report and make statements and or bring relevant documents in furtherance of investigation. That contrary to the depositions contained in paragraphs 21, 22 and 25 of the affidavit in support of the originating summons, it is not true that honoring invitations by relevant Banu state government officials in furtherance of ongoing invitation is distracting or causing inconveniences to the officials invited, who by virtue of their offices and responsibilities, duties, their statements are crucial to the investigation, which is very painstaking. That contrary to the depositions contained in paragraphs 23 and 24 of the affidavit in support of the originating summons, the statutory duties of the first defendant of investigating criminal allegations are never in conflict with the constitutional duties of the fourth defendant, hence there is no usurpation of the official functions of the fourth defendant, whose constitutional duties are quite distinct and different from the statutory duties of the first defendant. 
the first defendant has never interfered with the federal principles relating to the tiers to the tiers of government, as the first defendant is only discharging its statutory duties. Yesterday, Justice Namdi Dimba fixed August 29 for the hearing of the suit in which the plaintiff is challenging the propriety of the FCC's ongoing activities in the state.